Hello, welcome back to the Groove Agent 5 tutorial series. Today we're talking about patterns and it's actually part one of a mini two-parter. We're going to talk about patterns purely internal to Groove Agent today and then in the second part we'll talk about how we manage them um, more in an integrated manner inside uh, Cubase. So pretty much for the whole of today we're going to be dealing with the pattern tab and this is in the edit main tab and any time we're dealing with a MIDI pattern, we can get here. All three types of agents, uh, acoustic, beat, and percussion, all have the capacity to be able to edit MIDI patterns. Even if you're dealing with a style, you can convert styles into MIDI patterns. So one way or another, you can get to this stage where you're able to edit individual MIDI notes. And there's a hell of a lot of flexibility in this page. It's a really powerful and um, functional tool. Now, as we're looking at it at the moment, it's not how we want it to be. And the first step, the first stage, is to get the pattern editor looking how we want it. The first thing we want to do is turn the info line on. Press this little I button in the toolbar, and that's going to show you some basic information about the pattern that you pretty much want visible all the time. I don't think it's on by default. Um, I tend to find whenever I do a fresh install, you have to click this button to get it back. The second thing that you're going to want to do um, is hidden in this cog symbol, the settings page. Preview notes is pretty self-explanatory. That means when you click on a note, you're going to hear it. I like to do that. And show pad colors, who cares? But you know, it's on anyway. This visibility option though is really important. I would say for the most part, if you're dealing with a pre-existing pattern, you want to show keys with events because this gives you all of the sounds that you're currently working with in your pattern but you're going to want to toggle very frequently to show keys with pad assignments because that's basically all of your instrument options that that are available to you and you might toggle between those two things if i for instance want to make this sound over here that sound instead then i can't do that if perk 7 isn't visible to me so if that sound doesn't um here anywhere in the currently selected pattern we're not going to see that perk 7 option so get into the habit of just regularly toggling back backwards and forwards between those two functions finally uh, I recommend that you click show controller lane so that we can see some control information defaults to velocity and that's really useful and we want that at the bottom permanently visible so at this point we've got the editor looking how we want it to look. One final thing that you might want to do, it depends on how useful you're going to find this functionality, is that there's actually a curtain on the left hand side here as well. If you pull that over, then you'll see additional information. This quantize option, you can set individual quantize values for each instrument in the agent. So if we want to do like a global quantize, you can do a global quantize, but it'll use different quantize values for every single instrument on the um, in the system. It's not functionality I use, to be absolutely honest with you. So I tend to leave that hidden, but it is there. And we'll have a look at that again when we come to deal with all of the um, toolbar options above. So here's our pattern viewer configured to how we want it to look. And now we can actually get into looking at what it does rather than how it looks. Every single one of these pads is playing a pattern. This is one of the advantages of having um, show instruments with pad assignments is that you get a more consistent look as you click between the pads. If you're only looking at notes assigned to any individual pad, it can be a little bit jarring. The view is going to like toggle pretty rapidly each time you click on a new pad you're going to see a different set of instruments so you, you might want to choose this as your default option to work with we can see our play line strobing across the screen and just like in all of the other viewers when we zoom in we zoom in around that play line we've also got start and end points for each pattern indicated by these little orange squares up here if I pick these and drag and now I'm going to turn the loop on by uh, just pressing play on the internal groove agent transport which will play the currently selected pad it's just going to loop around that bit now 
Now, while we're dealing with, dealing with pattern starts and ends, I'll show you one of the many um, hidden submenus in this page. They're absolutely everywhere. It seems wherever you left and right click, new information appears. If you right click in the column headings of these instrument options up here, you get this little submenu. This only appears in the column heading up here. And you've got trim pattern to start and end. If I select that, then it throws away stuff that was outside of that pattern range that I just selected. So this groove has now switched from a two bar pattern to a one bar pattern because I selected halfway through bar one and halfway through bar two and it's thrown everything else away. Let's have a look what else is in that sub menu. Select all notes speaks for itself. Clear pattern also pretty obvious. Delete double notes is, um, as, as we'll see shortly, you can actually record data directly into the pattern editor. Um, so, and if you're in cycle mode and you do that, then you could end up with two notes very close to each other. I'll show you this, the kind of thing. On the right um, option up here, we've got a drum sticker. I can click and just create new notes. I pick this one up. I'm going to turn on snap to grid, which is these two little arrows pointing at each other, and then drop those two things together. So now those two sounds, those two hi-hat sounds, are both playing at the same time. You can see one velocity bar just peaking above the other over here. And now if I say delete doubles, it's thrown one of those away. Lots of this functionality exists in master cubase as well but you've got a lot of the sub editing features inside groove agent so you can get your patterns just how you want them to be before we export them to cubase duplicate pattern literally does that this is going to turn it from a one bar pattern into a two bar pattern and now you can see the zoom there's not much evidence from this page that anything has happened but the zoom bar just moved and now we've got two identical bars of the same pattern and obviously you can edit the second bar and now you've got a new thing. So that's our first secret submenu found in the pattern editor, uh, achievements unlocked. Let's have a look at some of our basic tool options. As we've seen, drumstick just allows you to click anywhere in an empty space, creates a note. If you click on a note, it removes it. So it's a really easy single click means of creating and deleting notes. You can create and delete notes using the select tool. You have to double click and double click on a note to delete it again. Erase speaks for itself, as does Zoom. Zoom's only really useful for selecting a range and then it zooms to that range. If you're not doing that, pretty much I use the, the, the scroll bar down here for, for zooming. Mute is also pretty self-explanatory and it's a toggle function. So if I select those three notes again, it will unmute them. This option over here, the line option, it defaults to a, a straight line and allows us to draw uh, controller options in the controller lane below. The line is really useful. The parabola is great for logarithmic stuff. And we've also got some slightly sillier but occasionally useful options. You can see me, if I move up and down with my mouse, it changes the gradient of the sine curve. Similar kind of thing for triangle and square. To demonstrate auto scroll, I just uh, zoomed out a little bit so we can't see the entire pattern. And it basically just ensures that it follows the groove as it plays. Pretty obvious. Show controller lanes we've already seen. This is the controller lane below. Show note length is really useful. This allows us um, a, a large degree of flexibility on how the drum sounds are going to sound. Most drum sounds out of the box are one shot, and so you don't care about their length. But when you introduce length, you get an awful lot of flexibility in terms of like gated sounds. We'll deal with um, some of that kind of stuff when we go over to deal, have a look at the, the wider agent based options because we've got some scale options over there. But basically, whenever you're dealing with drum sounds that aren't one shot, then you're going to need to know what their lengths are. And that's how you get to that stuff. So you get a, a different view. And now you can start edit, editing them as genuine, like standard events rather than drum sounds. Create notes when drawing velocity. 
allows you to draw stuff in the controller lane below. I don't tend to have that on by default, but there it is. Snap we've already seen. The insert velocity is the value. If I create a note, what's its default value gonna be? That's it. We can toggle between standard quantize, which is what the queue currently sets, uh, specifies, or iterative quantize, which means it basically jump halfway towards the um, the quantized target, the grid-based target that you've got set here. And this little play button is how we enable or activate quantize. So if I just move this node out of the way and then press quantize, it'll snap to the 16th. I just move it out of the way again and put iterative quantize on. It'll jump halfway there and halfway there and halfway there and it keeps going closer and closer until eventually it's going to get to the line. This little asterisk here, global quantize on off. Remember when I showed you the curtain earlier with the quantize values, it specifies whether or not it takes its steer from these quantize settings on the instrument by instrument basis, or when it's enabled, then it's a global quantize uh, value that uses this number over here. Not intuitive, but once you know that this column exists, it makes a lot of sense. I think by default, that's how big the editor is. And it's not immediately obvious that there's even a quantize value there. Just picked a new groove to play with to demonstrate the record function. So if I turn record MIDI on, it's now record armed waiting to record data inside Groove Agents itself. Not something I use an awful lot, to be absolutely honest with you. I'll prefer to do my recording. If I'm going to record like new data in, I prefer to do that in Cubase. But you can record them directly into your patterns. If now I press play, you know, it's just a recorder like any other. And each time it goes around, it's going to add, um, it's going to basically in mix merge mode. So get it going again. If I now quantize all of that. There's a lot of doubles there. A lot of these sounds being repeated. And so this is where we go to our hidden menu delete doubles and it throws those away. You see the red outline of the notes telling you that there are doubles there. Auto quantize, pretty obvious. Metronome also, pre-count click, yep. So this is your, 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 your little internal recorder over here and all of that functionality we've seen in Master Cubase. We don't need to dwell on it too much. Now, one feature that I find really useful, and it's only very recently that I actually discovered how to do this properly. If I want to move these notes over here down to D-sharp one, what I used to do was explicitly select them. And then you've got your cursor keys available to you. If I press down with my cursor key, they're all now D-sharp ones for the percussion eight sound. What I would prefer to be able to do is right click, select all notes, but by default, the left-hand column is actually selected. So when I press cursor down, it selects the next track down. It, it selects perk eight rather than moving the notes. But I've recently discovered if you press tab, it actually shifts uh, keyboard focus over onto the notes. And now you do have cursor up and down. That was a bit of a level up moment for me. I was really pleased with myself when I found that, but that's, that's, a really easy way of quickly moving your notes around, select them, tab, and then you're up and running. Down below, we've got our um, controller values and anything that there's currently data assigned to, you'll see an asterisk. When you're doing editing on these things, if you want notes together for visual purposes, you can pick it up and drag it. This is a purely visual aid. In fact, it's entirely disposable. If I select a different pad and come back, then C2 is back where it was originally. It's just a means of clustering stuff together when you're doing editing to easily see them visually, but it's entirely uh, non-destructive. So that's the internal functionality of the pattern editor dealt with. In the next um, episode, we'll deal with the more holistic view of the pattern editor within the context of Groove Agent and how we manage those patterns from Groove Agent itself into Cubase. Thanks very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it, found it useful. And if you did, please subscribe, hit notifications. You'll find out when the next episode comes out.
Hope to see you then. Thanks a lot.